Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Recently I came across a uh, YouTube video by Thomas Flight where he broke down David Lynch, who is an American filmmaker. He is regarded as one of the most important filmmakers of our generation. And I want to find out why. Now, who is David Lynch? David Lynch is a painter, a musician, a author, philosopher. He's many things, but he is mainly known for his filmmaking. One of his more notable films is Eraserhead or Blue Velvet or Mahalan Drive or even the Oscar nominated film The Elephant Man. Now, you may be wondering, I've never heard of this person. <laughs> Maybe you have heard of this person and you're trying to understand why I'm making this video, but he is considered as, quote unquote, the Renaissance man of our time. He is also considered as the first popular surrealist, Eraserhead, which is his first feature film, and it is also Stanley Kubrick's all-time favorite film. Stanley Kubrick. Now, after watching Thomas Flight's breakdown of David Lynch, it prompted me to want to look further into this artist as I had already seen a film from him. I recognized the name instantly because it was a film that I have officially deemed as the worst movie I had ever seen. Even more worse than The Room. However, that was unintentional. David Lynch intentionally made a bad movie. And that seems to be his style. I want to understand why he's so popular in the film and arts industries. So after not really being impressed by a short film that he most recently made, I thought it would be good to try and watch three other films that he's made. And just to give a little bit more backstory into how regarded this filmmaker is, George Lucas once came to him and asked if he could direct Return of the Jedi. George Lucas wanted David Lynch to direct Return of the Jedi. David Lynch has become more popular. He has created this style called Lynchian filmmaking. Some of those films that you may recognize, Donnie Darko, Being John Malkovich, Black Swan, The Shining, Barton Fink, The Lobster. I definitely agree that Yorgos Lanthimos maybe had found some inspiration through David Lynch and his filmmaking style. But again, all of these films that I have just named all do have somewhat of a cohesive storyline. And what I know of of David Lynch is that there is no story. So I'm interested to see what these three films are and whether or not they live up to the hype. Okay, so I'm gonna watch Eraserhead, which is David Lynch's very first feature film. I wanna see what this guy was like from the beginning. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we just finished Eraserhead and here are my thoughts. It was definitely exactly what I was expecting based on what I saw from What Did Jack Do? I think that for when this movie came out, I think it's really amazing what they were able to achieve visual effects wise, practical effects. I think overall they did a great job in that department. It doesn't have a story and that's what makes me not enjoy it. I don't see the point to this film, and I'm very sure that this is what he wanted. So maybe day two will be better. Okay guys, day two. Today we're gonna watch Blue Velvet. I feel like it's a good thing to watch these on different days. If I watch all of them in one shot, I definitely think that my brain will melt. With that said, Blue Velvet, don't let me down. I hear good things, so maybe this one will be different. Okay, so I know it's the next day, but I want to get my thoughts on Blue Velvet. It was actually pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't bad at all. It had somewhat of a story. It definitely is kooky or crazy in some parts. So I'll say that Blue Velvet wasn't bad. Okay, maybe I'm starting to see into the madness here. Maybe I'm starting to like the madness. We'll see what happens. Today, we're going to watch the third movie 
of the David Lynch franchise, which would be The Elephant Man. Hopefully that one lives up to the expectations of the Academy. Let's see. So I just watched Elephant Man, which is possibly one of the better movies I've seen. Ever. Which is a complete shock to me, as I was not expecting that. When I first sought to see David Lynch's films, I expected them all to be outlandish and very adventurous in terms of trying to not tell a story. This movie did exactly the opposite of everything we had seen so far from David Lynch. And for that, I can respect him. He basically shows in this film that he can do both. He is proving a point of art can go in any direction as long as the artist decides to steer it. So I highly recommend that if you haven't seen this film, watch it. It's a very unique film and a very amazing story. After watching this, I do want to try and make my own short film that takes in a lot of David Lynch's style. I want to try and make a two-minute Lynchian film, so enjoy. Get out! Leave. Just leave. Go. Now who's your daddy? Okay, so yeah, I would say that after this week uh, watching and studying David Lynch's films, I understand him as a filmmaker, I know what he's trying to go for, and I can respect him. I may not like all of his work, but I do believe that there is a highly capable filmmaker in there that chooses to make the art that he wants to make. And again, for that, I can respect him. After taking a crack at it myself, just to try and get in the mind of him, I definitely will say that uh, I'm not sure that his type of films are the type of films that I would make, but we're all different. And I think that that's the beauty of this industry, of this art form. That's the one thing that could probably be taken away from this whole experience. If you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up so that way YouTube can push it out to others. And if you are interested to see how I take on other filmmakers uh, work and want to see me try and recreate their style through my own style, let me know and I'll keep doing this because I actually had a decent amount of fun doing this. It was, it was cool. That's it for now, guys. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.